Hey y'all, this is Jeff Johansson back from sunny Florida. Uh, hey, working on a cool project, but before I talk about that, uh, let me uh, introduce this next little video. This is from Margaret uh, Scheiber, and she was one, well, the only one of the people that took me up on my recent What's Your Favorite Cat Who book and What's Your Favorite Cat Who cover from said book. And that's what's gonna be presented here. Uh, if you would like to uh, enter this, this is not a uh, contest by any means, but it is a chance to have a little bit of fun. Uh, my email address is kind of hidden in the about of this uh, YouTube channel. And uh, you could uh, let me know you wanna do one too, or if you have one, I could tell you how to send it to me. Sound great? All right, we're gonna get to Margaret's video in just a second, uh, but I wanna give you a little preview of the, uh, the Cat Who Word challenge I guess is what we call it and uh, basically I uh, had some really uh, cool help from uh, my friend Rita and you'll hear about that in uh, during the video but uh, we're working on that now and it's basically kind of uh, through the 29 books that Lillian Jackson Braun wrote and it's the uh, probably the 29 most challenging words and do you know them so that project will take a little bit of time and uh, so expect that here probably in the next week or two so after this video so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you margaret for doing it it's a fun video and margaret really knows her cat who so i think you will enjoy it as well without further ado here's margaret with her video greetings fellow quillerin fans yum yum adorers and cocoa nuts this is margaret scheiber coming at you from muggy swamp 400 yards north of anywhere which in my case is Route 32 on the, in the quiet corner of Connecticut. You might remember Muggy Swamp from The Cat Who Ate Danish Modern. It's an ironically ignoble name for a classy district of gracious abodes. My Muggy Swamp is a double irony in that this sits above an actual swamp. Nothing gracious about it. And Mug is my nickname. Oh, yes it is. But that's a story for another time. So Jeff asked us to talk about our favorite Cat Who book, which is really difficult for me because my favorite book is whichever one I'm reading at the moment. I recently started my 10th or maybe 11th round through the series. Full disclosure, I most often read by listening to the audiobooks narrated by George Goodall. And if you've never tried one of these, you owe it to yourself to give a listen. There are a few older recordings by Theodore Bacall of Fiddler on the Roof fame and Mason Adams, whom I always pictured as Art Riker. He even played a newspaper publisher on the old Lou Grant spinoff. But George Goodall, to me anyway, is the authentic voice of James McIntosh Quillerin. He voices every character as if each were in the room with you. From pompous Shakespearean actors to women of all ages and socioeconomic groups to the few children who appear in the books, whether wise beyond their years or maddeningly inquisitive. He is truly a man of a thousand voices. But if I have to choose, my favorite book would probably be one of the stories in which Quillerin and the cats are living in a building with a lot of rooms with colorful characters. The cat who saw red comes to mind, as does the cat who lived high. Maybe because I grew up in a neighborhood with no kids my age, I used to have dreams in which I lived in a big old house with a lot of different people, like the Casablanca, who would gather in common areas, like in Mouse House and indulge in a lot of drama. I loved the college dorm experience, but after three years, I was ready to get my own place off campus. I still love stories with well-developed characters just trying to get along amidst the drama. The other half of our assignment is to choose a favorite cover illustration. I have to say, I've seen myriad versions of the 29 novels and other collections, and I have to admit, my favorites are not any of the ones in my personal collection, save for maybe the last two. Well, we know how most of us feel about these two, so we won't go into too much depth, but look at the nice little Siamese cats on there. Simple, nice cover illustration. 
See, I love realistic illustrations of Siamese, and other than the little peaks of partial cats on a couple of my dust jackets and the two aforementioned novels, I've found cat hoop books with realistic Siamese graphics online on the mass market paperbacks from Berkeley Publishing. All my paperbacks are published by Joe, by Joe. Most of my hardcovers are Putnam, and my CDs are Penguin Audio. I say it that way because that's how they say it on the recording, so that's how my brain always translates it. The most beautiful covers that I've seen are on some large print editions published by G.K. Hall, and I hope to share some of these images if I can figure out how to edit them into this video. The book covers I love the least are those that have cutesy pie illustrations or pictures of cats who are most definitely not Siamese, unless they could be like my own sweet Lucy Blue Eyes, not so purebred Siamese cross. Would that make them Siamuts? And on that note, I'll say Sayonara, Saya Mara, Saya Nisa. Bye for now, and I look forward to hearing about your Cat Who Favorites.